What is up guys? Welcome to the Golf Cart Garage. We are back. We're back once again. What's going on everybody? Big Mike. Hey Tim, 56 Rainy in Northwest Indiana. Thanks for getting back to my email. No problem, Big Mike. Sometimes it takes me a while to get to your email, so don't, but don't, I don't want you to ever think I don't see them. I do see them, but um, uh, I will eventually respond. 62 Overcast in Athens. Rock Dog. What's up, Rock? Oh, dodging tornadoes, Kurt, really, down here in Florida. Well, be careful, hunker down. Lloyd Lou, checking in from sunny San uh, Joaquin Valley, California. Cool, Lloyd Lou. Larry Consley, what's up, Larry? 70 and sunny in southern Indiana. Not a good day uh, for exploring here in the rain, South Georgia, so we're doing clean and polish. I got you. Yep, sometimes the weather goes bad. That's what I do. I come, I, I unclutter or, or clean or do something. Let's see, Eric. Uh, Craig, what's up, Craig? Beautiful in Southwest Illinois. Eric, beautiful in Connecticut. Lee, hmm, a Santum, hmm, on Facebook. What's up, Lee? I don't, let's, let's see. I, I always like to try to pronounce people's last names, but uh, can't really see that one. I lost my golf cart garage uh, emblem on the TV, so I got myself on the TV behind me. Check that out. Isn't that crazy? It's me live here, but that's me live there, too. <laughs> uh, Lee says, hello, sir. I have a 2014 RXV EasyGo, and nothing will, work, uh, nothing will work. Batteries are good. It just stopped. I've changed out the controller the voltage regulator ignition is still nothing thank you Tim okay I don't think you mean the voltage regulator if you have a controller is this an electric car okay it's an electric car okay so you don't have a voltage regulator on an electric car ignition is still nothing if it just stopped you've changed the controller and the voltage regulator well, are the brakes locked up? Because you know, the RXV's got the uh, electronic brake. That would be one thing I'd want to know. North Carolina, Sir Walter, what's up, Sir Walter? Rich, East Main, 69, sunny here in Virginia's Eastern Shore. It's a cool day here in central Arkansas. It's outside right now. It's uh, kind of cool, feels good. Feel, it's kind of neat. It's, uh, it's, uh, I know we've got cold weather coming, then I'm gonna be complaining, but right now it's pretty cool. I like it. Stephen Kuhn checking in from Pensacola. What's up, Stephen Kuhn? Big Mike. If he ain't playing around, he's getting right into the question. <laughs> yeah. That's all right. That's all right. That's what it's for. That's what we're here for. Hey, Tim from Tehachapi, 57 and sunny. Thank you, Fish, for uh, making it easy for me. Tehachapi. Karina Gonzalez. What's up, Karina? Thank you for joining us. Eric, what would cause the one-on-one, -on -one, Eric says, what would cause the A1 and S1 to melt together? A1 and S1 melt together. The two wires were touching, but didn't see anything until they melted together. Well, Eric, there's enough. If you touch some, some things wrong in a golf cart, that's why this is a rubber ring, by the way. That's why this is a, you know, this is not a metal ring. It's made of rubber because you can't you can't wear any jewelry or necklaces or watches or anything like that when you're working on batteries because in, in an electric golf cart there's enough amperage inside there to weld. And so if something gets touched in the wrong place, you can weld a wrench to the side of the car. I mean, or, uh, instantaneously, <laughs> it weld it to the side of the car. So imagine. You know, if you touch two wires that are that are not supposed to touch, so it, lots of things can happen if you still have your batteries connected, especially. That's why, anytime I, I start to work on any electric car, I usually remove one battery cable. Just remove one, so it takes it. You know, cuts the circuit. You know, there's no there's no circuit anymore. Greg Elliott, afternoon all. Feels good to be on time for a change. What's up, Greg? Thank you for joining us. You should put that on all your TVs in the house. That way, cat can get more of you. <laughs> well, the only reason that that is happening right now is because I couldn't find it. I got a new TV. That's a new TV. And there's a setting in there. Then she, my wife told me where it was at. 
and i and i'm just looking right before i was to go live just one minute before that was a mistake and i couldn't find it so the quickest thing i could find was myself so that's what's happening there if i i bet it would be really weird if i turned the volume on i got it muted right now uh lee says it is electric and no the brakes are not locked up and my last name is Moyasant uh, or Moyasant? Moyasant. Moyasant. I got it. I think. I talked to Dave about Mike's big mic, then I welded my seat bracket. All right, cool. Wires were, were welded together while I was driving. I don't know, Eric. That sounds kind of uh, unusual. Let me check Facebook over here to make sure we're rolling. We are rolling. I don't know, Eric. I would think I would probably need to talk to you about this uh, so I could get more, uh, more details. Uh, consider making an appointment. Uh, consider setting an appointment and with, because uh, I've got a lot of questions. Uh, Fish says he ordered his Navita 600. Navitas recommended a 400 amp solenoid. Do all solenoid have a resistor? They not necessarily, but Navitas should have advised you about that too. They should have because I know they recommend a solenoid, but they they either do or they don't recommend the resistor on there. So uh, you, they they should be able to tell you that. Tim, Keith, and Chris from Nashville, sunny and 77. Nice day. Yeah, it is nice here too, Keith. Stephen King, I guess, is talking to, I mean, Stephen Kuhn is talking to Stephen King. <laughs> Stephen Kuhn is talking to Eric, I believe. Check the motor brushes. They could have gone bad. Nice fishy. 600 amp ultra, I mean, Navitas, yeah. That's all out. That's, that's what you'd get if, you, you know, you were going to try to build the ultimate car in the future. So get that 600 in there. Get that 600 Navitas in there. And, and you can just add on from there. Joseph... Sanfratello on Facebook, 2002 DS with the shunt. Okay, so you, that means it's an IQ. Why won't my factory charger turn off with good batteries? Each battery reads 8.4 and 8.1 on a load test. Total battery pack at 52. The charger reads 60.5 when plugged into the car. Now that's, all those numbers sound normal at the end of the charge cycle are a fully charged battery pack, Joseph. But how long have you let it go to, to say that it won't shut off? How many, how many hours would you say you have let it sit there and it, and it won't shut off? Because your car does have an onboard computer that tells your, your, uh, tells your uh, charger what to do, tells your charger to come on or, and shut off and tells it how long to run. So my question would be, how many hours has it run and still not shut off? Because it could take up to 16 hours for the first initial charge. Two days. All right. Well, that's not good. That's more than 16 hours. So I would say that if your batteries are good, which your numbers do look like they are good, that you have an onboard computer issue. Uh, you can either get you a new onboard computer or you can electronically bypass your onboard computer or you can get another charger that just hooks straight to your batteries and doesn't even use, don't, doesn't go through your onboard computer. Uh, like a Lester Summit 2 that we sell at Golf Cart Garage. We, you can get one, you can get a Lester Summit 2 configured where it doesn't have the plug, you know, the plug that goes into your cart. You can get one configured where it just has two wires that come out with uh, eyelets and you hook one of those wires to the first battery positive and the last battery negative on the other wire. And then you carry your charger around with you. It's a smaller charger and you carry it around with you all the time. Put it somewhere on your cart and then all you do is plug extension, extension cord into it when you want to, want to charge and it doesn't go through your onboard computer and charges your batteries. So if you've gone two days and you, it is confirmed that your, uh, uh, your onboard computer would be bad uh, if, it, if your charger has not shut off. All right, let me go back over here. Motor definitely seems to be going. I fixed the wires and put a brand new Alltrack 600 in it and it seems to work okay. All right, cool. That was from Eric. Here are social media links. 
that I will run. If you want to follow us on Facebook and YouTube, please do like and subscribe. And you can also follow us on these other ones. That's why I run those every time. This is Thursday episode. Guess what episode this is? This is episode 159. This is Thursday the 12th. If you're watching me right now, Thursday the 12th at noon central time. Uh, it is 12, 11 p.m. Right where I'm at right now at central time. Then you are watching us live on Facebook or YouTube. We're live on both of them right now as we speak. All right, we'll get into the questions here. The regular questions, I mean. Question number one. I have a 36 volt 99 club card DS. It has a lift kit on it and the factory resistor board, which has overheated and warped some of the coils. Okay, this is an example of what I've said many times. I would not lift a resistor car. It only runs about 30 minutes on a full charge. Through my research, I need to convert it to a controller and I like the Navitas mainly because it seems to be the most common. I, I can only find a system that is for an IQ model. Well, there's a, there's a reason for that. What will that work on mine? Do I need to upgrade it to a 48 volt while at it? It is easy as adding another battery to do that. No, it's a little, little harder than that. Now, the reason you would only, that's how the Navitas conversions work. They are only designed for plug and play operation if your cart is an IQ. All right, if an IQ system. So you have to convert your car to an IQ first, and then you get, a, you get the Navita system to and it's just plug and play. Now, since your car is a resistor car, you're going to have to start at square one. You're going to have to yank everything out of there. I mean, you may be able to reuse your key switch, but that's about it. You're not going to be able to reuse anything in that car. Uh, so it's up to you if you wanted to go through that that kind of project uh, because it's, you're going to have to get an IQ wiring harness. You're going to have to change your your uh, throttle uh, input from that wiper board setup or whatever you're using, V-Glide or whatever you're using. All that gets yanked out because you're going to have to get it, you're going to have to change everything over to an M core, and just that M pre M core to M core conversion kit is f over 500 bucks. Just that alone. So that's up to you if you want to take that project on. Now, a lot like I've said before too a lot of people have done it a lot of people have gone through the trouble to do that but i would think i would have to have but by the time i added up all the figures it would be it seemed like to me it might be easier to just go buy another cart that had that needs a battery job that already needs a battery job because that's going to be like over a thousand bucks knocked off the price of the cart if you buy one knowing that it needs a battery job so go ahead and buy an older iq that needs a battery job. There are probably a dime a dozen out there on the market. And that way you'll have everything you need. You don't have to do anything to the cart and you're starting from scratch. You're starting fresh. And it's got the M core in it. It's got the wiring harness you need. Then the Vita system will plug on right in and you'll be good to go. That's just my opinion. A lot of people may have another way of looking at it, but there's, it's, if it's about money, you know, you're going to have to, you're going to have to juggle some figures there to see which is the best one to go or the best way to go. David Shelley, my drowned icon is now working with a Navita 600 amp controller and 400 amp solenoid. Awesome. Awesome, David Shelley. Cool. John, what's the difference between a Yamaha uh, YRDE and a YRDA? That may just be the difference between electric and gasoline. I'm not sure, but they're both, they're both considered a Yamaha drive if they've got that D in there. Uh, that's probably just the difference between electric and gas. Larry Barrows, I need new 8 volt batteries. Do I convert to lithium or go back to 5 volt on 2010 club car precedent? I'm not sure I understand your question there, Larry Barrows. I need new 8 volt batteries. Do I convert to lithium? Okay, so you need you, your car is in need of a battery job. So you're wondering if you would if this would be a good time to convert to lithium or go back to not 5 volts, you need eight volts you need six eight volt batteries so that's this is that's you're at the point where you have to make that money decision is it i need a battery job a regular battery job is going to cost over a thousand dollars it's going to be over a thousand dollars for for eight volt lead acid batteries or should i go ahead and spend 25 to thirty five hundred dollars 
and convert the thing to lithium. So that's, that's up to you to make that decision. Craig says, I always have my eye out for carts that need battery jobs locally. I really would like to get one I could torque out. Yeah, that's, that's, what I, that's, that's how I like to shop too. I like to shop for carts that need a battery job. That, uh, because you can make a low ball offer, you know, on carts that, that need a battery job because you don't even know if it runs. You know, you just know that they're selling you, oh yeah, this thing is fine, but it needs a battery job. So you got two things in your favor there as the buyer. First of all, you know that it's going to cost me over $1,000 to, to get this cart running. And I'm assuming that it runs, you know, because I can't drive it right now because it doesn't have good batteries in it or has no batteries in it right now. So that's a, sometimes you can get some good buys that way. Golf Cart Garage said I was correct about the, the drive being the E and the A being electric and gas. Thank you, Golf Cart Garage. Captain Jim. Hi everyone. What's up, Captain Jim? Yeah, that's Dave that put that in there. That put that comment in there about the about the drive. Lynn Scrapper on Facebook. What's up, Lynn from New York State? Cool. We got people all over the place. John says, my cart was made in, the late, in late 2007, and the sticker says, YRDA, it is an electric car, or was it converted? I don't know, John. I mean, I, I'm not sure about that. YRDA, that, that just may be, you've got an R in there, YRDA. So there may just be another... See, YDRE is electric, and then YRDA, that may be electric also. Uh, this may be a different model of the car for two, in 2007 than, than the late models. I'm not, I'm not really sure on that, John. But uh, if I had my Yamaha thing, I'd look it up for you real quick if I had it right here or right in front of me, but I don't. Big Mike says to Dave, I guess, you find yourself in northern Indiana, Dave, let's get some food and a beer. Yep, that sounds good. I'd, I'd do it too. Uh, John, post your serial number. Dave is, Dave is on the, on the, in the chat. So post your serial number and let him, uh, let him look it up for you and see what the deal is there. Kentucky is where the jelly factory is. Uh, Rock Dogs is to Larry. Yeah, lithium's no maintenance, Larry. That is one of the reasons he went lithium. Yeah, there's, there's no maintenance on lithium, Larry. It's, uh, there's, really no, there's really no con. You know how lots of things have a pro and a con list? There's really no cons with going lithium except for the money. That's it. That's the only con. Everything else is pro on the list. The only con is the money. It is better in every aspect that compared to lead acid. It's going to be a better, better choice. Uh, the, well, I guess there's two cons. Cost and the fact that we do not have long-term data on them. That would be another con. So there's actually two cons. We don't have long-term data. We got a lot of claims and we got a lot of people out there with them right now, but we don't have anybody out there that's had them 10 years. You know, we don't have 10 years experience with lithium, but we have way more, many, many years, you know, with lead acid and lots of data involved on lead acid. So we know how good they are, but we, we're, you know, as time goes on, we're getting a, we're getting a little bit longer data. So there's, it's uh, mainly just cost. Where was I at? Number two is where I was at. This is from Adam. I have a 2018 club car precedent gas. It's been lifted and is street legal with high speed gears. From the day I got the cart, the bumps in the road are very, very harsh. Would you help diagnose my issue? This is a precedent gas, all right. It's been lifted with high speed gears. All right, does it have, my, my first question would be, does it have a four passenger kit on it? Because if it does have a four passenger kit on it, it's very likely that uh, it has heavy duty leaf springs in the rear. And that could be causing you some very stiff ride. All right, 
Uh, also, I'd, I would have questions since it's lifted. I'd have questions about your tires and rims. Is it a low profile setup? You know what I mean by that? You got a rim and you'd have very little tire sticking above the top of the rim or do you have a lot of tire sticking up above the top of the rim so you can adjust your air pressure down? You have a little bit of, uh, you have a little bit of leadway there to adjust your air pressure down. Uh, other than that, if you're still on the stock springs, there's really not much you can do besides air pressure and leaf springs. You know, take heavy duty ones off if you don't need them. My Summit 2 charger, this is from Andrea Lamb on Facebook. My Summit 2 charger, I'm sorry, on YouTube, clicks on to charge, then 10 seconds later says fully charged but hasn't charged a bit. Do you know what's wrong? Andrea Lamb, I would, my first question would be voltage on your batteries, individual voltage readings on your batteries, just so we can eliminate that there's something wrong there that's causing that Summit to back out of, a, of, a, back out of its job so quickly. Uh, that could cause it. So handheld voltmeter any kind of handheld voltmeter you don't have to disconnect any wires you're going to put one of these one one lead on the negative one lead on the positive of each battery and take a volt and take a reading just to make sure that every one of them is eight volts or more if your car is 48 or every one of them is six volts or more because one of those batteries if it was just completely shot it could cause your summit to do some weird stuff cause any charger to do some weird stuff <laughs> Watching Tim mock himself behind his back is entertaining as it gets. <laughs> uh, Dave, John posted the serial number if, you, if, you, if you're there. Looked it up. Why RDA is gas? Must have been converted. All right, Stephen looked it up for you, John. It must have been a conversion, so you were right. I know that easy go has done some conversions. I mean, I've, I've gotten that question before, but the factory easy go actually did some conversions changing uh, either gas to electric. No, they changed electric to gas. That's what they did. You got to understand that that whole battery rack on an electric easy go, uh, especially TXTs, the whole battery rack is removable. If you've got the body off and the right tools, you can take that battery rack out and, and toss it and you still have the same frame set up that a gas has. That's in the Easy Go. I know that for a fact in Easy Go. Now, I don't know in all of them, but or, or Yamaha, but I would imagine that's the way that it is too. Andrew says, I'm charging each separately now. Okay, good. Charge them each separately that way and, and take a reading, like I said, just to make sure that you're accomplishing something. You know, after you get them charged, take a reading just to make sure they're charged. And then after that, try your Summit 2 again. Let's see how many thumbs up we can give Tim a day. Hit that like for him. Stuff is free, folks. Look, how long, how long is the delay? I just put my thumb out there. Tim, wake up on the TV. There he goes. So I've got about a 10 second delay. Isn't that weird? Okay. Number three is where we're at, the regular questions. This is from Melvin C. Uh, Melvin C says he has an 84 36 volt club car that uses solenoids and speed coils. Okay, that's a very crazy system, but I'm familiar with it. It runs fine, but my father is 101 and it jerks on takeoff. I guess 15 years ago that was not an issue for him, but now these jerks are hurting his back. Is there anything I can do in this system to ease the tank off of the cart? I have all new solenoids and a new speed control unit in the cart. The only issue is the start. Can you help me? Thank you for your time, Melvin C. All right, Melvin. Here's the deal with the five solenoid system. It does not have smooth acceleration. There, and there's no way you can make it have smooth acceleration. Not perfectly smooth. The smoothest acceleration is, is going to be like this. You turn the key on, you got it in forward, you touch the accelerator pedal lightly, you should hear one click and the car not move on the first click. Okay, now that's important. 
The car should not move on the first click. I'll explain why. Then you push the accelerator pedal a little more, you a second click and the car will move. And then you, as you push the accelerator pedal more, another solenoid clicks and the car will jerk into, into the next speed. And then you push the accelerator more, the car will jerk into the next speed. It's instantaneous jerks. It's not a smooth transition throughout the pedal. So if you're getting a real heavy jerk on the first uh, click, then you got some bad solenoid, or you, I know you said you replaced the solenoid, or you got bad micro switches in that silver box, because there's five micro switches in that silver box that could, that activate each one of those solenoids. If you've got a missing solenoid, what you're, or a missing micro switch, or a bad micro switch, you're jumping past the solenoid and you're getting a more heavy jerk than it's supposed to have. Because I can tell you this, the first, the first roll is not that. It's not that difficult, even for a 101-year-old man. I don't think that it would be strong enough to hurt his back. It's not perfectly smooth, but the first contact is not real bad on that, on that particular system. So if your first contact is real bad, you either have a missing or a, a, a micro switch that's not working, or one of your solenoids is not being activated like you think it is. It's skipping the solenoid. And if it's skipping, it's probably the micro switch. Uh, see you later. Might want to check the cart for other stickers to call the previous owners for details. See you, Craig. Okay, let's check on Facebook again. No, we're still rolling over there. Number four is where we're at. We have a 99 EasyGo TXT 36 volt golf cart that ever so often it just won't run when the push the pedal. I've changed the solenoid and the batteries are only a year old and tested 37 volts. When this happens, the car seems to lose all power and the voltage gauge on it even goes off. Hmm. It works fine. It even goes 11 miles an hour up a small incline. Okay. The voltage gauge goes off when, it, when this happens. Okay, now that doesn't make sense. So you've got, because well, I, the reason I say that is because I know how that voltage gauge is hooked up. That voltage gauge is hooked to your main positive and your main negative. So I would be going to those, to, to those particular cable connections, your first battery positive and your first battery negative, and checking that out and making sure that those, that's a, you've got a tight connection there. There might be some little wires connected at that point that are going to end up being your voltage gauge too. So if when your car fails, the voltage gauge goes out, that kind of tells me you might have a cable that's actually losing contact, and it would be either your main positive or your main negative. That could cause your symptom. So that's where I would be looking. Victor Perez Jr., good afternoon. Good afternoon to you, Victor Perez. Thank you for stopping by, sir. We appreciate you doing that here, and I appreciate your participation. Number, number five is where we're at. This is from Gabriel. Okay, I think I... I believe I remember, I think I uh, emailed Gabriel on this question today. Uh, hello, Tim from Corpus Christi Testing. Thank you for doing your show. Thank you, sir. I really enjoy it. Question, I have a gas-powered 2022 club car onward six-passenger golf cart, 14-horsepower Kohler. We purchased it brand new, and every time we come to a stop, it will squeak. We took it back to the dealer. They connected all the belts and said, they checked all the belts and said everything was good. They explained to us that it was the braking system in the clutch mechanism. Is there a way to eliminate the squeak? or possibly replacing the clutch with an aftermarket one. We have about 15 hours on the cart, driven mostly on the beach. Thank you, appreciate your time. Well, here's what I think about that. First of all, the dealer's telling you that it's the braking system. So are they saying that every one of them squeak? Because I can assure you that that's not true because I talked to somebody just last week who had the Kohler. Don't have a lot of, I don't have a lot of experience with those that, that have that Kohler in them because uh, they're so new. Uh, I don't know off the top of my head what year they switched to using that Kohler, uh, but uh, I have talked to customers that have that Kohler that have, they don't have any squeak, is all I'm saying. So I don't, I, I'd be thinking about replacing that clutch, you know, just to, to get that out. I'd, I'd check on that first too, you know, 
Uh, ask your dealer, say, are you telling me, do they all do that? I mean, ask them if that's what they are, because if they don't, then you need to replace that clutch. If, if that's where the squeak's coming from, like they said. David Shelley says his speedometer is not working. Is that caused by my motor speed sensor? What kind of speedometer do you have there, David Shelley? Is it a, one of those, uh, yeah, tell me what kind of speedometer you have. Big Mike, Tim, are those battery gauges that you trust accurate? Well, <clears throat> like I've said before, I don't like the ones that just have the bar because that leaves a lot of, uh, there, there's a lot of room for mistake. If you just got an LED bar, you know, that goes up and down, they, those aren't very really accurate and I don't like it when people pay attention to those. I do like the ones that have uh, actual voltage numbers. Because you need to know, if you have an electric golf cart, you need to know if you have a 36 volt system, if you have a 48 volt system, if you have a 72 volt system, you need to know what, how many volts your cart has. So when you, the kind that have the numbers on them, when you start getting close to your voltage of your car, that's when you got to recharge. You don't want it to go below the voltage of your system. So that's way more accurate than that little LED bar, you know, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I don't like people to pay attention to them at all because if you have a good set of batteries, you should not have to worry about that in one day, in a day. You should be able to do whatever you want to all day long. And then at night, when you get through with your cart, whenever it is, go plug it in and it's ready to go the next day for the same thing. Now that's if you have a good set of batteries. That's another reason why I don't like to pay, for people to pay attention to those. David Shelley says he has a digital speedometer. I would, I'm not sure how that would be hooked up. What is your, uh, what is your cart, David, where you have a digital speedometer? Is it an unusual cart or something? Because I'm not sure how that would be hooked up. It may very well have something to do with speed sensor. It may just be something that's hooked to one of your wheels and it's counting revolutions on one of your wheels. It could be a magnet that is a, it could be the magnet system where you got the a sensor on one side and you got a magnet on your wheel on the other side that go and it counts revolutions. Oh, it's an icon. Yeah, see, I don't know. I don't know how those speedometers are activated. If you know that, let me know, David, because I'm not sure how that's activated. See, the speedometer is either it's got, it's either it's going to be either speed sensor, like off your motor, like you said, or it's going to be just a mechanical one that counts revolutions somewhere. Uh, icons get pretty fancy, so I wouldn't doubt it if it's geared to the motor on your motor. We got lots of icon dealers uh, popping up. Uh, I see from my uh, from a dealer magazine. They're doing a lot of advertising, and in, even in my area, we got a lot of icon dealers. Well, we got uh, in Arkansas. There's 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 a few. I sold a trailer just recently to an icon dealer. A golf cart trailer. Stephen Kuhn says, I put a GPS speedometer on mine. It's mo yeah, that would be the most accurate, getting a GPS that doesn't count revolutions or is, done, is not geared on, look, not looking at your motor revolutions or anything. Just a GPS speedometer would be the great. Yeah, Roger F says that too. I forgot, I actually forgot about that. But yeah, that would be the way to go nowadays uh, on any kind of vehicle if you wanted accurate speed. Uh, get an oil, uh, uh, Carl Jean Drake says, uh, get an oil injector pump for a two cycle robin. That's going to be probably difficult to find. If you can't find that at a, we're not going to have an oil pump, uh, a golf cart garage for that. If you can't find that at vintagegolfcartparts.com, then Call them up and see what they say because that's going to be difficult to find, Carl. Icons are cheap, as David says, they're cheap too. Yeah, they, you get a lot of features for little money. I mean, they got hydraulic brakes on the front from the factory. You know, it's, uh, I don't know how good they are, uh, but they, they do have a lot of features. Before the controller change. Who are you talking to there, Rock Dog? Put 
Let's see. Reggie, what's up? Reggie Watson? I've been stuck on the road. It's been hard to catch a show. Well, thank you for stopping in, Reggie. I appreciate your participation. Greg Elliott says, I need a golf cart trailer. What do you suggest? Well, I can tell you this, Greg. You can get away if your golf cart is completely stock and doesn't have anything poking out like a rear passenger kit. You can get away with a 4x8. But I can tell you what the best size would be, would be a 5x10. Get a 5x10 and then you'll never have a problem. It doesn't matter if it's a lifted car. It doesn't matter uh, if it's got a four passenger kit on it. It doesn't matter if you need to move your lawnmower, if you need to do, I, my, that's my, that's my go-to trailer for most of my pulling and picking stuff up is a five by 10. But uh, like I said, a four by eight will work, but it's tight. But if you wanna, I just say five by 10 cause you can use it for other stuff too, not just a golf cart. I had a, a five by 10 with a ramp, you know, the, the tailgate ramp is a perfect trailer to me. Hot dog was talking to David Shelley. Okay. May have come with the controller you changed. Uh, Carl Gene Drake says, how critical is the oiling on the crank uh, bearings? I just replaced them and I want them to last. Well, I can tell you this, Carl Gene, most people just do away with that altogether and they just do pre-mix, you know, on those, on those two strokes. It, uh, at, you know, if you're doing a rebuild and you actually went down that far, then if your oil pump is not working, you're going to find very few people that would probably go through the trouble of trying to find an oil pump. They would just start pre-mixing. They can, I see people pre-mixing anywhere from 50 to one to 100 to one. Right after a rebuild, you should probably do something like 50 to one for a little while. It's going to smoke pretty bad and, you know, but then start backing off like 50, 60, 70, 80, and they got all the way up to 100 to one. People don't realize that, that like on a, uh, the, that ratio, it, when you have that oil pump on there, that ratio is variable. It's variable depending on the RPMs of the motor. So sometimes it's putting more oil, sometimes it's putting less. So the ratio is continuously variable. Did y'all hear that? That was a motorcycle that went by with a stereo going. Uh, my five by 10 is steel. But if you're never going to be hauling anything that's real heavy, Greg, then I've, I've seen five by 10 aluminums and they're going to be a lot lighter and easier for you to move around. Like you aluminum, my five by 10 is pretty heavy. Now I can move it like without connecting it to a vehicle. I can go pick it up, pick up the front and, and move it around. But if it was any obstacles or anything or any hill or something, I wouldn't be able to do that. You might be able to do that with an aluminum. So that'd be up to you. Aluminum may be the way to go. I don't know. I don't have a lot of experience with aluminum and I don't know how much lighter that would actually be. But I, I can tell you this, if I, there's, if I could change anything about my five by 10, then that would be it. It would be that I wish it was a little bit lighter. And as I get older, I'm wishing that more and more. I want it to be lighter and lighter and lighter. So, so aluminum may be the way to go. <clears throat> Rich says he's been online all day looking for a five by 10. <laughs> That's the perfect size to me. That's the perfect size trailer. Uh, Carl Jean says, thank you. That's very helpful. Uh, Carl Jean, go to Go to Buggy's Gone Wild. I'll give them a. I'll give them a plug. I don't. Uh, go to buggiesgonewild.com. Buggiesgonewild.com. It's a golf cart forum. There's going to be an easy go section. There's going to be an easy go two stroke section, and there are going to be lots of people that are talking about what they did. And they, there's going to be lots of, of of things you could read. People that uh, eliminated their oil injection and what ratio they're running and what they did. There's lots of information there that would be helpful to you. Put the speed to the factory display. That, that could be right, Rock Dog. I don't know, on an icon, that may be right. Greg says, thanks, says my back is broken. Oh, sorry, Greg, yeah. Maybe you should get, maybe you should get the uh, aluminum because the I can tell you what, five by 10 in steel, is pretty heavy. Mine's sort of a mid-grade. They actually make a 5x10 that's even heavier than mine. I used to have one of those too. It got stolen 
And so when I replaced it, I replaced it with a little bit lighter duty, but my little bit lighter duty still, 5x10 is still pretty heavy. Speed displays on the app. Speed displays on the app on your phone? On the, uh, David? Yeah, if he changed, you, you're probably right, Rock Dog. Factory controller talked to the factory display. The Navitas will not talk to the factory display. Uh, You can get a free speedometer app on your phone that, that you can use anytime. I've got several on my phone. Just you can get a just go get a speedometer app, and it's very accurate too. When when you get one on your phone, I've checked them many times. I've backed into a five by eight with the rear seat footrest over the front rail, but definitely want the extra room on ten. There's yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, get a five by ten, you won't be disappointed. You get a four by eight, you're you're limiting yourself. Uh, and like I said, you could take bigger things too, a little bit bigger things. You check Facebook, make sure we're cool there. Yep, we're good. We are still rolling good over there. What was five? Is it that, did I do five? From Gabriel? Yeah, I did that from Gabriel. And I even sent Gabriel an email this morning. Number six is where we're at. This is from Irving. Battery was dead. Sales low on water. I filled all sales with distilled water. The charger comes on with blue light followed by green lights above the blue light and then green lights go off leaving the blue light on with a flashing yellow light above the blue light. What's wrong? Please help. Number six. Well, that's going to be fault code specific to whatever charger you're using. You didn't tell me what charger it is. I mean, a Summit 2 has blue and yellow and green lights. I don't know if you're talking about a Summit 2 or not, if you're talking about some other type of charger. But it's going to be a fault code. You need to look up your fault codes. It may be on the charger itself, the, the, the green, the, uh, the colors and what the fault code is. But it's going to be a fault code specific for that charger. Let's see, Carl Jean says, okay, I have a lot of money in my easy go, about 800 in paint. Then you factor in 500 in the motor rebuild. And there's upholstery, tires, and the sound system. Yes, Carl, it gets expensive if you keep track of it. If you keep track of it like that, it's gonna upset you because it's gonna be a higher figure than, than, you, than you ever wanted it to be. Uh, back in the car on the trailer can cause havoc on the windshield. That is true, that is very true. Get a, uh, you can't go very fast or that windshield will be blowing down the interstate. Victor says tractor supply has 5 by 10 with wood floors, by the way. Uh, windshield hit his truck. Yeah, I've lost a top off a golf cart on the interstate too. Blew out of a backward loaded trailer, yep. David Shelley says don't think about the money. That's true, because if you do, you're gonna you're gonna get upset. I mean, do you want to do this project or not? As there comes a point we say, do I want to do this project or not? Because if you look at the money too closely, it's gonna be too expensive. There's no doubt about it. Lynn Scrapper says, with my cars and farm tractors, I was always looking for bigger trailers. Now I need smaller for carts. I'm just never happy. Yeah, five by ten, Lynn. That's a good size for cart. I've, by the way, we've never talked about that before, so that, that's a real good question uh, about what's the perfect size trailer. Now, of course, that's just my opinion, but I, uh, I've always had to move lots of different equipment, golf carts for sure, and I really use this snot out of my 5x10 for everything. Lawn mowers, golf carts, everything, four-wheelers, motorcycles. Big Mike says, never keep totals. Yep, that's what I was talking about. You'll get upset. Our 
term the one. <laughs> this is the first of three carts, is what Gene says. Or tell the wife, yeah. Yeah, never keep totals or tell the wife. Exactly. Uh, Rich, I've lost a top because it wasn't secured right, but I have also gone 70 miles an hour down the interstate with tops that were secured correctly and never had an issue. Never had, but I checked them beforehand, you know, before I took off. My trailer, I could haul four golf cars on it, and I would check the tops before I, before I hit the interstate. Still working on bathroom remodel. Yes, I agree, 100%. Never add the total. Yep, on a bathroom remodel, that's a good example. Uh, same thing, do not keep the total. We, uh, we didn't keep the total when we had this, this shop built. I mean, this is a brand new shop. Uh, and uh, I quit keeping track and asking questions. Uh, my wife actually was in charge of this. So I quit, I quit asking questions way early in the beginning about the money. I just, I didn't want to know. I just said, well, I'll just spend a long time paying for it. Found an old pop-up RV for free, Stephen Coon, stripped it down and built a custom trailer for my golf cart. Oh, okay, out of an RV, out of an uh, RV frame. Yeah, that's cool. That'll work. What size shop did you build? This is this particular building is 30 by 40. It's 30 by 40. And it has a and it has a bathroom, so it's a it's nicest shop I've ever had. I've never had a shop where myself is on the big screen behind me. I've never had that before. I did notice the wedge shaped plastic that holds the back of the top into the bracket was broken, but I'm not sure if it was like that when I got it. Yeah, this is. It's, well, I saw your garage, Big Mike. It's, this is kind of like that, it's, but we have a garage, we know, with the cars in them. Uh, but, yeah, this is sort of turned into my man cave. You can put a car in here. It's double-door drive through but uh, as you can see, it's, that's not what I use it for. Tim, you are blessed. Yes, I am. Good, Greg. I am. I'm very lucky. I am. I feel very lucky. To, I feel very lucky to work for Golf Car Garage. I, it's a good company. Yep, it's my doghouse. It definitely is my doghouse. But it's a doghouse that I wouldn't mind being put in. You know, if, you, if you're going to, you're not punishing me by saying, you know, I'm sending you to the doghouse. That's not punishment. This is where I get to go if I get sent to the doghouse. I got my motorcycles in here. Uh, I mean, how, how much of a punishment is that? Captain Jim says he built a 30 by 40 as well. Loved it. Yeah, 30 by 40 is pretty cool. Mine's a, uh, Big Mike says 30 by 24. Every man needs one. Yeah, every man needs one. Oh, and by the way, Big Mike, I remember seeing your garage and you had that little bar. That's what this laptop's sitting on right now. There's a little bar right here with a sink. Uh, it's a granite countertop bar with a sink. So I, I still have some more decorations that I want to put up. I like that Trojan battery sign, that Trojan dealer sign. That's actually a real Trojan authorized dealer sign. I'd like to mount it, and I've got some pictures and things that I want to put up on the walls. I'm not, I'm not really sure what I want to do with the theme, though. So right now it's pretty blank, actually. So I don't know if I want to go with a, you know, a, a taxidermy thing with deer heads all over the wall, or, or hog heads or something on the wall, or if I want to go with a country western kind of thing or a rock and roll kind of thing. I'm not really sure what kind of theme that I'd, I'd want to go with in here. I've, I've got a lot of. Uh, beer signs and and because uh, a friend of mine sold a bar a friend of mine that i know he sold a bar and he gave me a few things out of the bar so i've got that theme in a room in the house just sitting there i don't know if i'm going to use that stuff or not uh david shelley there's a refrigerator right here to my right yep there he is need to get a stove kirk says well hmm don't know Norman Lucky, you're in your man cave. Yes, I am. This is my man cave. T 
films, Shangri-La, Shangri-La. Hey, that's cool. I might, I don't know. I'll come up with a name and put it on the wall or something. Captain Jim has a 24 by 48. Love it. Yep. Where are we at on the questions? What number was I on? Uh, Fault Coast Pacific. Uh, number seven is where I'm at. This is from Kane, or K. I'm interested in converting my electric golf cart to gas. Well, funny, we just had, we just talked about that. What parts do I need to purchase? Is there a conversion kit available? I think you may have to check with OEM, like a, whatever your cart is, a, an easy go or a club car. You're going to have to check with them and see if there's one available. Other than that, from OEM, there's a, you're going to have to do some research. A lot of people have done it. Uh, there are some motor cradles that you could, you know, like I said, on the easy go, you, the battery rack is removable. And then you've got this, the same frame, so there's going to be some components. I'm, I'm almost positive that easy go has an OEM conversion kit. Uh, I think they've done that before at certain golf, cars, uh, go, at golf courses. Uh, so you're going to have to check with your golf cart manufacturer and see if they have one because I don't know of one on the aftermarket. Uh, I don't know of a, any kind of bolt-on conversion kit on the aftermarket from electric to, to gas. Stephen Coon says, put pictures of golf carts all over the walls. Hmm. I could do that. I could do that. Captain Jim, I have a 24 by 48. Okay, cool. That's a big one uh, lengthwise. Now, this is 30 by 40, but it's, it's enough. Uh, I had a 30 by 40 before we moved to Arkansas. I had a 30 by 40 before that I used to run my, my golf cart shop was actually 30 by 40. So I knew how big a 30 by 40 was. And I knew that in, if I wasn't going to run a golf cart shop anymore, if I was just going to do this and talk to people about golf carts, then I knew 30 by 40 would be plenty for for, for my stuff. And I built all those, I built all those shelves there, uh, for actually with leftover wood from the building of this, of this shop. There was some, some leftover lumber. And so I was able to build almost all of that with, with the leftover lumber from the, from the uh, construction of this building. And then I painted it, you know, and everything, but Uh, we do, Greg. We have some Let's See. Yep, sure do. We got one. Number eight. Uh, I was thinking, this is from Randy, I was thinking of switching my six six volt batteries out to 312s. Okay, here we go again. On my 89 Club Card DS. Is there any reason why I should not try it out? Any advice would be greatly appreciated. Well, Randy, we talk about this almost every third episode or so this comes up. And 312s will work, but I do not recommend it as a permanent fix, just for testing purposes. And, and if it, you know, just to test out and make sure everything in your golf cart's working correctly, you can put 312s in there and check it out. And once, you, once you're sure that everything is working correctly, then put 6.6s six back in there or you're going to be disappointed. You're going to be disappointed in the amount of time your golf cart will run during the day before it needs recharging. You're going to be disappointed in the, the longevity that you get in years out of those 312s. It's going to be drastically reduced because your charger is not the correct charger. Now, if you went through the, if you went through the trouble of charging those 312s, which are most likely going to be, you're talking probably marine deep cycle is what everybody puts in there. If you charge them with a marine deep cycle boat battery, a boat charger, you know, for a marine deep that has a marine deep cycle setting, that might be okay. But if you try to charge them with a golf cart charger, you're just going to charge them too fast, and they're 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 going to slowly die on you. They're going to slowly go away, and they're not going to last very long. You're going to have to buy them again, and in the end, you haven't saved any money. That's what that's my opinion. That's my advice. That's from my experience and seeing it. I've seen people do that. I have done three twelves in a golf cart just to see if it, if my if I had gotten all my electrical connections because I had the batteries on order. So I did it for just a short period of time, quite a few times, just for testing. It's easier to hook up three twelves than it is six sixes. Uh, let's see here, Rock Dog. Around here, gas are cheaper than electric. Probably more cost effective to just replace, not convert. I would agree, Rock Dog. I mean, that's a lot of trouble 
and uh, you could just go buy one, you know. And but and how much is the motor and everything going to cost you if you if you bought a motor, you know, a gas motor? How much is that going? That's going to be over two thousand bucks for the motor and everything. So you can get a whole cart for three or four thousand dollars, and and it's already done. You didn't have to convert anything. So I kind of agree. Norman says, how many batteries will army tanks carry? Uh, don't know. Uh, they would probably carry quite a bit. Big Mike's no marine. That's got to be the second most used phrase next to does a solenoid click. You're probably right because that, that question does come up a lot. Victor Perez Jr., do you carry? Do I carry what, Victor? You didn't, you didn't finish your type, type in there. Uh, Lynn Scrapper says, it's weird that I always thought I wanted a gas cart, but with the crazy power, with the noise, electric, I'm glad I went that route. No, the crazy power and no noise of electric, I'm glad I went that route. Well, for a while there, you know, but th this is, for a while there, you, I used to get questions, you know, what, what should I get, electric or gas? Now, this went on for years. Okay, and there's a pro and a cons list, like I was talking about, for each one. And I would explain to people, you know, if you can uh, get gas, they tend to handle neglect better than electric, and which was surprising to people. They say, "Oh, I thought with electric, all I do is charge it, and then I can go." Well, no, that's not the case. It's a little more complicated than that. You have to constantly be thinking about what is your situation in your batteries. Uh, is it? My charger taking care of it correctly. Do I need to fill the water? Do I need to, to do this? Do I need to check them? Do I need to go drive the cart and then recharge it? Do I need to go, go unplug the charger and plug it back in in the winter? There's, there's a, it's a little more complicated than that with electric cars. Gas cars, you, this is what you got to do with gas cars. You got to change the oil, change, put the tune-up kit on it maybe once a year. And then all year long, just put gas in it. And, it. and you probably won't even have to use too much gas because they get such good gas miles. So I, in my opinion, has always been that gas was less maintenance or, or let, less thought into take care of it than, than electric. That's just my opinion. But nowadays, lithium came up. So the pro and cons list has changed a little bit. Lithium has now gotten to the point where, you know, the, you don't really have to worry about anything. You just charge it and you go just like customers used to think, you know, about lead acid, which wasn't true, but it is now true for, you know, if you've got lithium or you've got a sealed battery system. So the nowadays you can, wh whichever one you want, uh, electric or gas. I do like gas cars. They're awesome. But when, well, good gas car, people are amazed at how they, how they work and that how they, they hold together because they have good power. They're smooth. They're not very loud. You know, they're designed to be quiet because they're designed to be on a golf course. So I, th I think they're pretty cool, really. Victor Perez says, do you carry a windshield for a club car? Sure we do, Victor. Go to golfcartgarage.com. And if you would like, Victor, you can use, when you go to golfcartgarage.com to order your windshield, you can use this coupon code right here. Check this out. Get 5% off any parts you order at golfcartgarage.com if you use coupon code TIM15. That's TIM15. This code expires on November 10th, 2023. Get 5% off any parts you order at golfcartgarage.com at checkout. You got that, Victor? TIM15. Greg says, no 911 for me, I carry. So do I, Greg. Uh, I do too. Oh, so does my wife, by the way. Number nine. From David T. My carb was flooding and no way to adjust the float. I bought new carb from you guys and it's doing the exact same thing, so I'm trying to get some advice. David T. What, uh, my question would be, David T., what do you mean there's no way to adjust the float? Because the, the way that you adjust the float is you actually just bend the tab. 
That's the adjustment. There's no screw or nothing, you know, to adjust the float. You just bend the tab. So I, I, that would be my question about the float. Rock, uh, Rock Dog says, better than American Express, don't leave home without it. Yep, that is true. Victor, Victor got it. All right, cool. Number 10. This is the last scheduled question. Oh my goodness, we are over time. This is from Molly P. Uh, Norman Lucky says, is it true when lithium gives no indication when it goes dead? No, that's not true. Most lithium conversion kits come with their own uh, meter now, or they, they come with their own gauge, and they let you know. You're supposed to mount the gauge when you mount the lithium, if you get a complete kit. Now there are, you can get lithium that doesn't have a gauge, and uh, what, what lithium does, let me close this. The lithium has a, is a different discharge curve, like lead acid. Let's say lead acid, fully charged. As you drive the cart, it goes down, 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 down. As you drive it, as you discharge it. Let's say lithium, fully charged. Lithium kind of goes like this. It stays all the way up, drops very little until it gets down to a certain point and then drops quickly. They don't want you to get to that point where it drops quickly, so they make you recharge somewhere with that, but it tends to have a straight line discharge, or almost straight line. It's not perfectly straight line, but. Big Mike says, time flies when you're having fun. Yep, I'm sorry about going long today, guys. I didn't realize that until just now. Question from Molly P, 2012 club car, is a 2012 club car compatible with an ERIC charger, and what is the advantage of the ERIC charging system? All right, the answer to the question is no, it is not compatible. The ERC charger is the charger that Club Car came out with when they stopped using the onboard computer. An ERIC charger is not an OBC controlled charger. 2012 car has an OBC, so it needs the other charger, the older charger that is an onboard controlled charger. That would be the answer to your question. That was the title of this episode, by the way, ERIC charger. All right. Let's, nope, not quite. If you want to buy a hat from Golf Cart Garage, you're welcome to. There it is. Got links in the description. Take you right to them, whatever color you want. There's my cool hat graphic. Dunk, dunk, dunk. Take you right to them, the hot links. We give away hats here occasionally on Golf Cart Garage. We will have a hat giveaway. The last uh, winner was uh, Gary England. Uh, yep, Gary England was the last winner. So let's see some cards. All ready? Bam. Today's featured cart is one that uh, William Rizzo actually sent it to me. It is not his cart. He, well, I've featured his cart before, William Rizzo. He's regular on the, in the chat room. But this is a cart that was just in a parking lot in Florida in, in the villages. I mean, if you're familiar with the villages in Florida, there's all kinds of crazy carts. So this was just in a parking lot just with, you know, with other automobiles and other golf carts because in the villages you can drive your golf cart everywhere you want to go. So you ready for this? Bam, look at that. <laughs> and my man, Iman hooked it up with the captured by William Rizzo. He captured this photo. Kind of a Rolls Royce, uh, the Monsters kind of set up with a supercharger on it. Uh, fender wells, bigger tires, but that is actually started out as a golf cart. Can you imagine the cost if that if that body kit is actually available you can only imagine how much that actually costs or I can only imagine how much that actually costs that is crazy I would imagine there are some crazy carts uh, in the villages there's so many uh, in the villages it, it, it's, it's not surprising that it would be something like this there and I'm assuming that that's fake here, the, the, the motor, you know, I'm, I'm just assuming that because it is a golf cart. Let me check Facebook over here, make sure we're good. Yep, we're good there. All right. If you need to contact us at Golf Cart Garage, feel free to go to golfcartgarage.com and click on support. There's a link for support at Golf Cart Garage. 
here is uh, the phone number and the email link. There's a phone number and an email link. And if you need to send something to me, you can send it to that email address and say, attention, Tim, and uh, the, I will I'll then make sure I get it if you say, attention, Tim, on there. Uh, if you have a suggestion for a product, please, please uh, send us an email or give us a call or type it in the chat. Uh, these chats are recorded. So if you got any uh, advice on questions or things you think that we need to carry that we don't, we'll be glad to hear them. I'd love to hear them. Greg says approximately 30 to 50 grand. That's probably awesome. I mean, that's probably true. That's probably true, Greg. There's no telling. Because there are cars. I mean, we talked about it with uh, some other members here. There's a golf cart out now that I get in my dealer magazine. I can't remember. It's called Atria or something like that. It's 30 grand off the showroom floor. 30, 30 grand. 30 grand golf cart. Okay. We did social media links. We did coupon, we did hats, we did contact, we did let's see on the cart that William Rizzo sent in. I want to thank William Rizzo for sending that in. Any cool pictures of any cool carts like that, guys, send them to it. Send it to Golf Cart Garage. I'll get them in it. You may get featured on the show. So feel free to do that. I am out of here. This is a uh, tomorrow's Friday. I am off tomorrow, so I will be chilling out. So I appreciate everybody for showing up today. Uh, please come back. We will be doing this again. So the garage is now closed. <laughs>